nearly as uh, prepared as I thought I would be. Um, but uh, bear with me, we'll go through. And I'll tell you what uh, protospace is about. Use the Anyways, my name is Ben. I um, am one of the directors of uh, Protospace. And uh, us directors have been working our butts off this summer to try to revitalize uh, Protospace and make it into uh, an awesome organization that's able to facilitate community and facilitate technology in Calgary. She said other button, I don't know. There we go. So who here has heard of the hackerspace? Hands. Yeah. It's a modest one. So what a hackerspace is, is it is a part of a worldwide movement where you have a shared physical space that people go to work on projects, to build communities, to connect, to be a part of a collaborative work environment where their project and whatever initiative they're working on is more than just themselves. It's more than, you know, some thing that they've been plunking away on their computer for the last, like, eight months on, you know, as far as code or something else. Um, you can uh, know hackerspaces by other names like uh, makerspaces, make spaces, hack labs, hack spaces, creative spaces, um, because hackerspaces now are becoming um, parallel with uh, the maker movement, which, if uh, you've ever been to a maker fair, it's a very similar concept. <laughs> so what a hackerspaces does for a community is takes like-minded individuals that all have a curiosity, that all have a drive to learn more, to do something bigger than just um, what they can do on their own. And it drives collaborative innovation by, if you have a project, you bring it forward and you say, hey, I'm working on you know, such and such, like I want to do a hydroponics project, but I have no, I have no idea where to start. And at hackerspaces, there is a lot of diverse skill where almost all the time when you go to a hackerspace, you find somebody who wants to be involved in a project because either they've done it before or they themselves just love the idea and love the kind of, that, that need to do something bigger, to be involved in something more than just uh, what they can do on their own. So, one of the big things about a hackerspace is that it's not just to kind of create a culture that's um, confined to the walls of the physical space. It's to drive a movement. It's to drive the culture of hacking, of DIYing, of tinkering, of curiosity, really. <laughs> So Protospace is Calgary's local hackerspace. We've been around for a couple of years, but um, it was only recently that we got into, um, that we had a change of direction. Just in, in June, we moved out of our old space that was at 1012 McLeod Trail. And we went through a, almost like a pilgrimage phase, trying to figure out who we are and what we want to be, how we want to affect the community, and what we want to do and provide Calgary with. So we've come to the conclusion that we want to be an innovation incubator. We want to help people bootstrap their projects, bootstrap their initiatives, just like any hackerspace that you find worldwide. So Protospace is a registered nonprofit organization that is funded by membership um, uh, fees that are monthly or donations or whatever kind of people want to commit. And it's completely supported by volunteers, so there is no paid positions in Protospace that keeps the place running. Um, they just, people feel the need to be involved in something bigger. And so they get involved and they do something. So yeah, again, our summer was spent rebooting. We um, became a transient hacker space where we would actually travel from event to event, um, setting up tables, um, showing people how to solder, showing people how, um, you know, robots work, showing, like, we uh, ended up having a couple events where we do food hacking. Right there, you see a vacuum siphon coffee machine 
um, that would just you know blow the minds of people that you know they'd be walking by and they'd never seen coffee brewed like that. Um, and then you know barbecues and lots of other uh, festival involvement. Um, and so come October 1st, we're moving into a new space that is going to be able to um, do a lot more than the old space did. We'll be able to have industrial projects. So if you want to work on something that's huge, uh, like like a you know an artistic project that involves a lot of metal or a lot of wood, or else you're building a greenhouse or something. It, it all can be done in front of space, no matter what the project is. And this uh, new location is uh, where we moved in um, with uh, the organization, uh, the Cerebral Palsy Association of uh, Alberta. And uh, they're giving us access to um, all the resources within the space. And um, we're able to do a couple of awesome projects for them. So, how I got involved in Protospace is I did a project at SAFE called OpenBTS, where it's an open source cellular base station, where you can set up a computer, a little electronics box, and then hook it up to an antenna, and then you can actually broadcast your own little captive cellular network that you can connect to without having to modify your phone. So I couldn't do that project by myself, so what I did is I went to Protospace and said, hey, did you want to be my, industri my uh, uh, kind of industry sponsor? And from space said yes, and ever since then I've been on board with trying to um, further the community because it gave so much to me. Some of the projects that we're doing includes uh, like a few tools and uh, rooms for the Street Palsy Association of uh, Alberta that will serve to um, basically help the patients of uh, Street Palsy. Um, we got a couple members that are actually in the process right now as we speak back at the, our um, temporary location. They're building um, basically their own metalworking shop out of scrap metal. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of people interested in hydroponics, open source, um, sound mixers, uh, pretty much anything that you can think of that's a project that you can't do on your own. It can happen at Protospace. And we not only facilitate projects, but we build community through events and workshops. One of the things that's going to be going on later tonight is they're going to be showing uh, a video on uh, Kirk Sorensen talking about uh, LFTR. So we were able to host <laughs> Kirk Sorensen uh, after one of his TED Talks here in Calgary. Um, and we also, earlier this summer while we were mobile, um, we paired up with the winners of Awesome Calgary and we taught people how to solder underneath the bridge in the middle of the night to build awesome little fireflies. Um, out of little pieces of electronics and decorate uh, kind of the riverside. It was really beautiful. And we hope to have workshops where people can come in and like we'd be able to teach them skills that they wouldn't otherwise be able to learn. And hacker spaces are completely, uh, most hacker spaces are, uh, again, uh, they live through donations, they live through um, the t tools of the members. And so we have a variety of tools that are able to facilitate certain projects, but we're planning on um, getting a lot of those tools that a lot of hacker spaces are well known for, like laser cutters and 3D printers and CNC milling equipment where you can actually, if you have a 3D um, CAD drawing of something on your computer, you'd be able to basically make it appear in real life after putting a block of metal into the machine. And uh, we actually did a, a survey recently trying to figure out what sort of tool that people wanted access to. And it uh, ended up being rather interesting that a lot of people, they weren't interested in some of the big, um, in, in let's say a 3D printer one, we, we were thinking that we were going to allocate a whole bunch of resources to buy a 3D printer. They, everybody wanted, uh, let's say, computer and networking equipment more than they wanted a 3D printer. And as far as partnerships, uh, Calgary Protospace Limited likes to be involved in initiatives that have a very like-minded nature. Some of them are, well, Super Palsy Association of Alberta, the Western Canada Robotics Society, uh, Solar Robotics, they're a, a local uh, electronics and robotics uh, supplier here in Calgary, and Endeavor Arts, who, um, they are, they're an art gallery uh, here in Calgary that strive to um, incorporate technology with art. And so we've been doing a lot of great projects with them over the summer and are going to continue doing so. And so, to the main points of 
presentation is why does Calgary actually need a hackerspace? Because you can do a lot of these things without having like, a, a space to go to with a lot of people. They're able to buy equipment, put it in their, in their garage, and then work on it without the help of other people. But that's not, that's not efficient. That's not how to discover something that you would have never otherwise been able to discover without that community. So collaboration is one of the things that we're trying to establish within Calgary. We're trying to, all these partnerships that we're doing with other organizations, we're doing so that we can um, further community and further that kind of uh, curiosity for tech, innovation, and um, arts even here in Calgary. <laughs> so overall, we want to bootstrap your initiatives. We want to facilitate your imagination. Um, and I'm just going to throw a little membership plug here because Protospace is funded through um, member donations and uh, kind of recurring monthly fees that if somebody wants access to the space. So if you want to become a member of Protospace, um, a full member, it's $50 a month and then you get 24-7 access, unrestricted access to the space where you'd be able to come in, work with the community, and use some of the tools that you would not otherwise have access to. If you're a student, you get a discount. You can drop in at any points and uh, you know get access to the equipment too, but then you don't have as much of a connection with the community. Or if you just want to kind of support the cause, uh, you can give us a donation and you know give you full online access to our tools and uh, forums and all of our discussions. And every Tuesday night we have a meeting geek, so we have people that you know come in and work on whatever project you want. So we're so working on an electronics uh, project for the owner of Endeavor Arts. Um, if you see, see that wood there, they were actually making uh, their own beer, uh, what they? like a beer mugs, yeah, like oversized beer mugs that they were able to source themselves, like they would cut it with a router and then tie it together with wire and, you know, they're going to do the rest of the, like, curing or whatever you do to the wood to prepare it so that it can, you know, contain liquid and you got your own beer mug that you've made yourself. And, yeah, it's just hanging out and just connecting with people. So that's Bird's Face in a nutshell. Like I said, it's been quite. Questions? When did you guys get started? Um, our actual date of being established, Paul, was. A good question. A good question you don't remember? <laughs> no. One of the founding members? Is Years ago? Uh, yeah. Uh, July 1st, 09. Yeah, so before that, the community was like, there's a whole bunch of people getting together and they're like, hey, we want a hackerspace because all these other cities around the world have hackerspaces. Why doesn't Calgary have it? But in that time, um, I think, in my opinion, uh, it, was, it was pretty uh, inhibiting to have a space that couldn't uh, house large tools and large projects. So that's why we chose, even though it's over the way, that's why we chose a bay uh, location that's industrial zone so that we can actually facilitate huge projects that uh, members want to do. Other questions?